next comment card is from Brian Dardill. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Brian Dodgill with the law firm of Roberts and Dodgill here on behalf of the opponents. Uh, you should have a supplemental objection from us. We've sent a title abstract to Fulton County to review the record of title on this property after we ascertained that the, uh, I think, 41 spaces that are listed as on-site are not actually physically on-site. They're on the post office property. So this property actually only has 70 spaces. If it is reconfigured, it actually has even less than that if it's not. And under your ordinance 18.2, there are two critical pieces. One, that all uses have to comply with the off-site parking, and that parking has to be on-site, or if it's off-site, it has to comply with the exclusivity use uh, so that it can't be something that's shared with someone else unless that property comes in as well for conditions <coughs> to be imposed on both properties. And the post office obviously is not in front of you. The site plan is a little bit misleading because the site plan that's part of this application reflects property that is not physically owned by the Church of Scientology. Now, there is a property line there, I'm not saying there's not, but if you look at the overall site plan as part of the application, it doesn't really show you that those 41 spaces can't be counted toward their on-site parking. And if you limit it to the 20% that I think 19.3.6 of the ordinance requires, then only 23 of those off-site spaces can be counted toward the required parking. Now, I know Woody stood up and said that under the ordinance they'd only be required to have 46 spaces, but the applicant throughout this process has made a great deal of effort to point out that this church does not operate like a traditional church and that their main uh, focus is not on the sanctuary, that it's on these smaller meeting rooms. It's completely appropriate for staff to do what it did as far as analyzing um, this is offices and, off and uh, classrooms and things like that because the applicant has made a point throughout the process to say they are not a traditional sanctuary driven church that governs what the uh, required parking should be. Based on their parking studies, that that's what they ask staff to go by, then they come up with 113 required spaces. Well, of that 113 required spaces, 23 of them could be off site by way of an easement. The second piece that you have here is that this easement is not exclusive. It is a non-exclusive easement. Um, and the ordinance requires that parking to be dedicated to them entirely. Since it's non-exclusive, it can't be counted at all. And that limits them down to 70 spaces. So now you're going to be talking about putting in a 43,000 square foot building that only has 70 spaces. That's a completely unmanageable building. And there's no way you're ever going to be able to keep up with or enforce the parking conditions. We respectfully ask that y'all be fine. Next card I have is from Sheila O'Shea. My name is Sheila O'Shea. I'm a resident of Roundhill Condominiums at 5400 Roswell Road. I hope that this will be my last statement on the matter. Despite Mr. Galloway's efforts to dismiss the neighborhood's concerns as merely a parking issue, there are, as those before me have explained, far more serious issues. The petitioner claims the square footage must be expanded for them to use this building. The building is already too large for the space it occupies and only exists on that lot by being grandfathered in from previous variances. Even the staff recommendations of three floors would be tantamount to denial as the petitioner has been quite insistent on the enclosure of the basement to the point of making the absurd argument that denying them this would be religious discrimination. If the square footage of this building is indeed insufficient, then they should find a property that already has the space they need instead of overbuilding this term. The clearest path is to deny them outright. They have been disingenuous to the point of deception and should not be rewarded for it. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Anyone else that wishes to speak in opposition? If not, Mr. Galloway, it's um, time for your rebuttal. Council members, my name is Bob Adams. I'm Vice President of the Church of Scientology International, headquartered in Los Angeles, California. And I came here tonight to talk to you a little bit about the, the church and its zoning application. We wholly support your support of our application as it is written and as the statute for the city and the county read. That's really all we ask, that we are granted the same rights as anyone else. 
the, um, as with all of our cities, uh, where we have a church, in 8,100 churches and missions, 165 countries, in those cities, the city fathers and the citizens know that we're good citizens, and we pay attention to our responsibilities as a group of citizens themselves. And that is the message that I have from all of the parishioners around the world, and in particular here in Sandy Springs. All the parishioners here really look forward to moving into their new home, the new church, where it stands, and being able to carry out their religious practices as have been defined to you. We do need that space, and it's really the way our religion operates. So with all due respect, thank you very much. I hope um, your decision does take all of this into into um, into the matter, and that uh, the decision is based on the foregone. So thank you very much. Okay. We have an additional card in support from Nancy Davis. Hello, I'm Nancy Davis. I live at 17218 Deer Trail in Alpharetta, Georgia. I'm a very long-term Scientologist. I'm an Atlanta native, and I've come back to Atlanta after being in many other cities for 